Hello everyone, my name is Anuj and I just completed my final year of MBBS for which I had to study almost 8 to 10 hours every day for the last 12 months and in this video I'll be telling you how I did it consistently without having a lot of burnout or fatigue and I also enjoyed the entire process. So no matter what exam you're preparing for, be it boards, NEET, JEE, UPSC, whatever, this is the exact video which will help you stay consistent with your studies and not give up in the middle. Point number one is I talked to a senior before I began my final year in BBS. I took the guidance from a senior and she was the topper of her college with All India rank 102 or 3. She guided me exactly on what resources I want to use, what are the things which I should not do, all the postings which are important, all the topics which are important. She guided me in a way like nobody else could have guided. So my first point is talk to a senior before you begin your journey because that is going to give you an unfair advantage which nobody else is going to have. That senior has already walked this path before, they know what are the do's, what are the don'ts. So make sure before you go ahead, pick up a role model who is doing good in their studies, who is doing good in a particular field. That that you want then just message them to help you and I'm 100% sure that they will say yes because most of the people who are in the top they actually pull each other's up rather than pushing them down. Do this even before you buy a single book or a paper and follow the things that they say which apply to you. At this point also remember that everybody has different strategies for preparation. It might happen that 80% of the things that they are saying might apply to you but the 20% which they are saying might actually be not at all useful for you. You have to segregate the things which you can do versus you cannot do. Just don't fall anybody blindly. By the way if you're new here let me be your unfair advantage because I make videos which really help you improve your student life all the way so go ahead and push that subscribe button you will never regret it number two i had plans both short term and long term short term plans are extremely important because those are the plans which actually tell you what work you have to do daily long term plans actually help you narrow down what you want in life the short term plans which i had was something like this i need to complete pediatrics by the next seven days i need to complete medicine one month i need to complete surgery in 15 days so these are the short term plans which i'm talking about the most important thing that you should keep in your mind was that you should always have some sort of buffer in between because life is going to come in between and it's going to mess up things second you need to make your plans based on your own capacity i say i complete medicine in 30 days maybe you can't do that maybe you can do it in 10 days so make your plan according to your capacity don't follow somebody's plan blindly but someone's plan can actually be a starting template for you to design your own third what i did was the subjects which i actually completed i matched them with my posting so let's say i was going to study obgyn that was going to happen when i was posted in ops and gyne and that's exactly what i did it gave me a double edge on my preparation because in the clinics i was seeing the things which i read the last night coming to my long term plans in the first three or four months i actually tried to complete all the marrow videos which were present these videos were exactly what was given in the textbooks and that made my textbooks really really easy during the course of these videos i did not read my textbook much actually i did not even open them i only opened the clinical books which were important for my clinical postings after the videos were done i just completely closed the marrow app and focused 100 percent on the textbook and that is exactly what my long-term plan was complete the videos in three or four months and complete the textbooks in the next three or four months definitely if you watch all the videos your textbook is already covered and also read university exam answers by just watching marrow videos of edition six so the first two points senior for guidance as well as long-term and short-term plans for actually just planning before you even start studying now I'm going to tell you how exactly did I study for those 8 to 12 hours every day. I studied a lot in my clinical postings. In GMC Nagpur, we were posted in surgery for 2 months, OPS for 2 months, medicine for 1 and a half month, and pediatrics for 1 month, orthopedics for 1 month as well. And whenever I went to a posting, I made sure to take a case. Every single time I was in the hospital, I was next to a patient in the ward, writing down their history, doing the clinical examination, writing down a particular performa, and actually trying to present it to the teacher. In the medicine posting, I remember I took the case of multiple sclerosis, transverse myelitis, stroke, and so many other different conditions which were present. Studying a lot in clinical postings made my practicals really really easy because I already knew all the clinical questions they were going to ask me or I knew already what the examinations they were interested in and all the tricky questions which they asked me for example in the posting I remember one of the teachers actually asked me to demonstrate grade 3 power of the adductor muscles of the thigh so you just think about it you won't actually be able to do it because you have to then hang the patient up and then ask him to move his leg upwards so that's actually not possible and this was one of the questions that was asked to me in my final year viva and I exactly said that and that actually impressed the external as well as the internal so the thing is clinical postings teach you something which books cannot teach you it teaches you what are the questions that the teacher is actually going to ask you. So you take the notebook to the clinical posting, write down all the cases that you have, write down all the questions that the teacher commonly asks you. I'll just show you the clinical textbook I made. As you can see, this is the case. I've written on the date, the name of the case, and as well as every single thing that is important. And I did this for all the cases that I took. And this notebook contains every single case relevant in final year MBBS. So every day from 9 to 12 or 1, I used to just focus on my clinical postings. After coming back from clinical postings, I used to study whatever they have taught me in clinical posting at least for one hour, review all the mistakes I did that day and correct them. So the, so the next time I was given a case, I would never make the same mistakes again. Trust me, this is very, very important in medicine. Next point is I actually had a complete routine in place. I did not just study apparently. I had a routine in place, super clinical posting now. Take your lunch, come back home, just keep on studying. Sit at your desk at 2.30 or 3 and just start studying continuously till 6.30 or 7 in the night when you are getting bored. So this 
this exact routine helped my circadian rhythm of my body to adapt to whatever I was needing at that moment. So if you don't have a daily routine in place, that is what separates you from the people who are not doing much. We all, we all get 24 hours in our life, but how you use this 24 hours is what actually matters. And if you have a perfect routine which helps you optimize, maximize the productivity in these 24 hours, that is going to get you to the top. My routine is the exact reason I'm able to handle the channel while also being a final year student now going to going into internship and, and also doing so many other things at the same time. I've actually made a separate video on how you should make a timetable and set your routine. You can watch that video after this video starts. After taking a dinner break for 1.5 to 2 hours, I just used to chill out, watch some movies or series at that time. And I used to sit down again for studying at around 9.30 or 10. I used to study till 12.30 or 1. This was very, very important because I needed to complete the syllabus done because I also had the work of YouTube at the same time. You can you can go watch the earlier study with me episodes. You will find the exact routine being followed all the day. In GMC Nakpo, we did not have as many theory classes I did in first and second year so it was very easy for me to easily follow this routine. It was the time where I was actually bored of sitting in the same place and studying and that's when I thought of going to the library and joined the library of James and Akbar and then just studied in the library for many many days at least for two months I was in the library just continuously working hard on the things that I wanted to achieve. Next point is I use my free time quite a lot so a lot of students come up and ask me sir it is going very difficult first year MBBS ma'am ko ye sab karna hai padhai ke liye time nahi mil raha kya kare so the thing is I tell them use your free time. What do you mean by free time? Free time, as a, free time are your weekends, your Diwali vacations or Christmas vacations your different vacations that you get in between your college the bunks that you do in your college all of these are your free time use that free time to your advantage because that time is never going to come back every time i had a weekend i made sure to use that weekend to full saturday was a day when i used to completely focus on doing youtube work but on sunday i used to sit and study from the morning to the evening and the evening i would go out with my friends enjoy my day Especially after October when my college postings ended, I had almost twice as much free time because the morning gave kuch hours were not given. So at that time, I just woke up and right from this bed, I used to go to that study table. I just used to sit there uh, till the entire day was over. You might be thinking at this point that this guy just studies so much. He goes from bed to the table all the time. Does he not have a life? I traveled a lot this year, went out with my friends and did all the parties you can do as a college student. But I always made sure to keep my priorities set and I always made sure before I did something like that, my studies were over. At least at least the short term plans which I had made were over. The next point is that I actually had only one source for everything. For medicine, I had just two books. For surgery, I had one book. Same for ops, gyne, orthopedics and all of those subjects. As well as online resources are considered for everything in final year, I just use Marrow. And the reason I use Marrow is because I was a Marrow Pro student for the last three and a half years. Marrow actually gave me an upper edge in my preparation for final year. For example, in surgery, sir always used to start with the clinical case, end with the clinical case and MCU discussion. Also, they used to show photographs of the different surgeries which are being performed, which are commonly asked for us. And in the end, they also give us final year topics which are important. So for example, in an inguinoscrotal swelling, they told us, okay, hydrocell is important for you, uh, epidermal cyst is important for you, and two, two to three different things. So along with my neat PG preparation, it also helped me a lot while reading the books, which is SRB, where I was able to segregate which are the topics which are actually important. When I studied radiology, sir always started with a question and they did not answer the question right then and there. They actually just explained the entire chapter and by the end of the chapter, I was able to answer the question myself. So in Marrow, the concepts are built right from the very basic. And they don't just teach you the subject, they actually teach you how to approach a patient, how to use your clinical knowledge which you've gained. Especially Especially for final year subject, it's a very, very good resource. Anyone of you has a doubt which resource should we use, you can definitely use Marrow. Next thing was the Marrow question bank. So I did question bank fairly inconsistently throughout the year. So I did question bank whenever I felt like it. But the most important thing was that I solved question modules quite a lot. The habit that I've had since second year of MBBS and old viewers of the channel would know this. Coming to the notes section, you can definitely use the notes for Marrow for Opsgaini as your only resource because Sakshi Ma'am has taught us in that way that it can also be used for university exams plus Vivas. That is actually exactly what I studied for my final year practical of Opsgaini and I remember I get a, got a case sheet of prolapse of uterus and I talked about further this operation and that really put a smile on the <laughs> extra's face because I was able to tell the steps and all of that. All thanks to those textbooks over there, Marrow Notes. So in short, keep one source, online kill Marrow and these are the books that you should be using as a final year student that I used and they really helped me out quite a lot. The next point is kind of cheesy but I feel like I should absolutely talk about this. So whenever you're studying, you get these spells uh, and I like to call them spells of demotivation. You just feel like I just don't want to study this anymore and it was very very difficult for me to stay consistent consistent because especially in final year itna sab kuch karne ke baad na dimag ud jata hai puri tarike se so how did i actually keep myself motivated to sit down and continue studying so it's going to sound cheesy but i'm going to still tell you i told myself anuj you are going to be a doctor in a few months just study for these next three or four months and you will be able to call yourself Dr. Anuj Pachel. That still, you know, gets uh, my heart beating faster because it just means that much to me. It's the only thing that I've dreamt since I was a child. I always wanted to be a doctor and I was, I was so close to it, right? And I just kept telling myself that the result of final year. Ka. You'll just go downstairs, you tell your parents that, okay, I have passed my final year. I'm officially a doctor. You'll go and change your Instagram handle to Dr. Anuj Pachel like everybody does. And that actually kind of kept me going in some way. That that actually motivated me ki chalo at least that studies is going to get me something i want because mbbs is so unrewarding at times you study so much you get you get just a few marks right 
बट वंस यू गेट दैट फीलिंग इन फाइनल ईयर की ओके यू गोइंग टू बी डॉक्टर इट जस्ट चेंजेस दी एंटायर गेम कम्प्लीटली डेड फॉर मी एट लीस्ट एक्सलूटली डोंट एक्सपेक्ट एनी वन ऑफ यू गाइज टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आई एम फीलिंग बिकॉज दिस इज एब्सोलूटली वेरी पर्सनल बट दिस इज वॉट एक्चुअली कैप मी गोइंग आई आई यूज टू इमेजिन डॉक्टर अनुज पचल लिखा है मैंने ना आई शो यू वन थिंग यहाँ पे तो लाइट आ रहा है छोड़ो ओवर ओवर देयर ऑन दैट वॉल आई हैव रिटर्न डाउन डॉक्टर अनुज पचल बिकॉज दैट मोटिवेटेड मी अलॉट द नेक्स्ट थिंग विच एक्चुअली कैप मी मोटिवेटेड एंड दैट ऑल्सो बिंग्स टू माई नेक्स्ट पॉइंट गुड सेगवे बाय द वे इज एग्जाम्स For the last seven or so years, I have been a predominantly self-study dependent student. The reason why I self-study is because I have an exams every fifteen or twenty days. That's what used to happen in the post tense. That used to happen during the mid post tense exams that we used to have, where teachers just used to ask us random questions of the postings that we did, as well as the prelims, the terms exam, and the final university exams as well. So since we have in MBBS so many different exams at different different intervals, it really makes us study for that exam. And during that studies of that particular exam, we actually become very consistent. Anyways, if you're a student, the key take home. point over here is that give exams give exams all the exams that you have attempt them study for them because that studying is actually going to help you quite a lot in your preparation so, so some of you might be just self studying for let's say neat and you might be asking sir exams kahan se de the most simple basic answer is take a previous year question books and and start solving the question papers from there so these these were the basic points that you need to understand on how I actually studied now let's move on to two of the most critical points that i want to make in this video number one i had mental breakdowns during my preparation and i don't think many people talk about this uh, i did not face burnout but i did have mental breakdowns uh, especially it got so so hectic in the last 1.5 months when i was preparing for the university exams what happens is that when you are studying since so long you are basically resistant to burnout but your mind keeps playing tricks on you and it keeps telling you that all of this studies is useless and that is what i like to call mental breakdown it is not demotivation because demotivation can be overcome mental breakdown is something which will take 2 or 3 days off you will feel like not doing anything you will feel like not getting out of bed you will feel like there is no point in studying because it is all useless so i haven't told this to anyone but i'm telling this to you again because you're my friend <laughs> subscribe kar do main do bar dost bol diya tumhe <laughs> i just told this to my parents but at the end i was feeling like i had done a very big mistake taking mbbs i felt like uh, there are so many different fields i could have taken which actually gave me better results over the long term and i was like bas ab ye mbbs karne ke baad i'll just give up i won't do my md ms whatever and it was like taking mbbs was not a good decision i should have really thought about it in class 11 12th and these were the kind of thoughts that uh, you know happened to me quite frequently this also happened when my friends my engineering friends who were my batchmates in class 10th were actually getting jobs of 50000 70000 1 lakh per month and i was just here just studying on my desk and just doing the same thing i've been doing for the last 5 years and it hits you quite hard especially if you're a med student yahan pe log ke jobs lag rahe hai kuch log ki shaadi ho rahi hai and yahan pe meri medicine ki textbook hi nahi khatam ho rahi again at those times i had to take a few days off because my mind just wouldn't allow me to study but then i kept going somehow somehow i motivated myself talk to my parents talk to my friends and guess what all of my friends were feeling the same way all of them were thinking yaar kya kyu liya medicine mein abhijit was so frustrated he called me up and he said kya main ko chhodna hai main nahi padh raha exam ke liye so that, that is the level of frustration which happens in the last month so i will say this again medicine is not for the people who are weak of hearts medicine is not for the people who don't like studying it is absolutely not for you if you are someone who likes an easy path it is only for the people who are ready to take a very difficult path in their life who is ready to sacrifice on everything who is ready to see other people go and have much progress in their life and while you are just sitting and studying and it is not at all as much paying or as much rewarding as you might be in some other place too much respect for mbbs doctors they study so much if an engineer makes a mistake most of the times nothing is going to happen unless he makes a mistake on the plane and the plane crashes then everybody dies it's it's a different story but 99% of the times nothing is going to happen if a doctor makes a mistake leads to a wrong diagnosis gives the wrong investigation gives the wrong treatment it plays with the life of a person it plays with the life of a patient which is something which is unquantifiable right so it is quite a stressful thing but i'm so happy that i'm done with it and by the way i'm not quitting after mbbs i'm going to do my mdms hopefully fingers crossed the thing is mental breakdowns are going to happen is going to be frequently it is going to be common especially in the last month don't it's going to be okay you're going to get over it like all of the bad days in your life you have gotten over things you've got you will be getting over this right now the last point is that took break so when i say i studied eight to 12 hours per day i did that for around 80% of the days of final year the rest 20% were some what i like to call non productive days so maybe sometimes 4 hours maybe sometimes 5 hours sometimes even 12 or 16 hours i did that but the other times i just took a break because i need to rejuvenate and bring my energy back i love to travel so that's exactly what i did and that helped me a lot so the key take away point over here is that whenever things get too overwhelming take a break maybe maybe go play the guitar maybe go travel the world or do something which makes you really really happy 
happy just don't lose this this is the most important thing that you have the thing which rests on your shoulder the last honorable mention i would say is have good friends that actually care about you uh, that you can talk to that are actually accountable to you and share what they are studying i know this is hard but if you find them don't let them go anyways that's been it from my side guys thank you so much for watching and also please make sure to subscribe it's bhavanuch and i'll catch you in the next one goodbye smash like